So my name is Katie Pollard, and I am a senior investigator at Gladstone Institute and professor at UCSF. I was really excited to come here to Gladstone and UCSF six years ago because I value the very interactive and collaborative research environment here. My research doesn't fall very neatly into a single academic discipline. I use um, a lot of different approaches. My knowledge base is wide. I'm not um, a classic scientist who just focuses on, say, one protein for their entire career. What I do is look for patterns, and it's patterns in files on a computer uh, that represent things that we can observe in our own DNA and in the cells in our body. But it's really the same as taking a hike outside and looking for the things that are patterns that are predictable and that reoccur, and also being able to separate those out from the random events. So why um, did a particular leaf fall at a given moment and where did it land? That you may not be able to predict, but you may be able to see a pattern that at certain times of year leaves fall. We're looking for those patterns in DNA, and we're also trying to understand the random processes that break the pattern. So I was born in Boston and grew up mostly in Baltimore, Maryland, and I um, was influenced and exposed to a lot of science as a kid. Uh, my dad is a scientist and worked at Johns Hopkins during most of my youth, and so I got to go into the lab and have uh, summer jobs in some of his colleagues' labs and things like that. He was in a department of cell biology and anatomy, and in that anatomy department, there were a number of professors who were working in physical anthropology. They were going to East Africa, digging up um, what turned out to be some really famous fossils of our ancient ancestors. And so I used to love to go down the hall and talk to them and look at their collections of bones. And that got me really interested in thinking about evolution, which I now study from the genetic perspective. I just followed what I was interested in and, and found my path, but it wasn't a direct route. To a, to a goal that I saw from the beginning. Um, yeah. Here at Gladstone, we're now taking a very different perspective on human health that um, wasn't possible a few years ago because of breakthroughs in both computer and DNA sequencing technology. And that is um, when we think about the human body and why someone gets sick, we're not only thinking about the human cells and the human DNA right now, um, which is what I and others have been doing in our careers for many years, but we've realized that actually the human cells are the minority of the cells in our body and that we're actually mostly made up of bacteria and that those bacteria help us to be healthy and as well as can cause imbalances that make us sick. So. I feel like just in the last few years, we've opened up this huge window um, of opportunity where we'd really only been looking at a few percentage of what was going on and looking at the human cells, and now we can see a much broader picture, and I think there's going to be a ton of impacts on medicine and on our understanding of how the human body works. These bacterial or micro microbial cells, um, which we call, refer to as the human microbiome, the human microbiome is very... Um, malleable. It will change from day to day depending on your diet or other behaviors. So we, we know we can change it and that's really different from our own genetics. We're born with a particular genetic signature and more or less we're stuck with that our entire life. Um, for example, if we carry a mutation that puts it at, us at risk for cancer or heart disease. Um, but if the actual cause, or at least part of it, was through the microbiome, if the bacteria were mediating our risk for disease or even were the source of the risk, um, the amazing thing is it, it can actually be changed really easily through diet or other manipulations. And there's a number of companies now working on drugs that would specifically target the bacterial proteins rather than the human proteins in our bodies. Uh, I feel uh, much of what I do now in my job is mentoring other scientists and I feel a huge sense of pride when I see the people in my lab succeed. Yeah. Have you tried a Emacs or any of the other ones? Uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes I'll edit like directly. And so um, seeing them uh, produce yeah. exciting science and go on to their own careers is in a way more important to me than my own discoveries. <laughs>